Hello and welcome to another Process Love Candy. My name is Mark Sheard and you can find me on Instagram at Sheard. And this is a time-lapse demonstration of one of my pop culture fan art pieces. Today's piece of Love Candy is based on one of my favourite films. This is Disney's Tangled. So I'm going to show you my full process here. I start off with a quick squiggle. Now this squiggle, the first thing you do is always just good to do. Don't just start drawing your full details. It's good to do that quick squiggle drawing to make sure you've got enough room to fit your whole drawing in. Um, you can see when I've drawn, I've straight away have to resize things to get them in the right position, give enough air around each character and make sure uh, everything's readable. I'll constantly keep flipping the angles and trying to push this further and further into my liking. I've shrunk it down a little bit more now to give a much a bit of area to breathe around the edges. I'm switching the angle of the um, frying pan. Now I've gone for a very diagonal and strong approach here. I really wanted Rapunzel to have the upper hand here and be the stronger character and show this moment of her strength. Um, so I've had to make sure to to push that by making sure she's on top. She's elevated. She's the one that's that's got the height in this moment. She's pulling very hard and taut on that hair that's wrapped around Eugene there. Um, and, he, and I've accentuated that more by making it tighter where her hand is, but then much looser around Eugene's chair. Uh, and that gives that really strength, that pull in there. Now, more to push this strength, you know, she's leaning out with one arm but pulling back with the other and I've once again tried to work on my silhouettes to get this to become a really strong and clear and expressive pose. In, in a moment I'll show you the silhouette so I can explain what I mean by that. But the general flow of this one, I'm going for a strong directional backwards as she's pulling that hair and then out again with that frying pan right into his face. And I, I've given a nice clear amount of area around that frying pan to make sure it's clear and visible. That is the driving force of this drawing, pushing that threatening in the face with that frying pan. So what I, want, I wanted to make sure that was very clear and easy to read. The secondary flow of force is coming from the characters. They're giving us a diagonal arcing direction to the left, which is in contrast to the driving forces of the strength and the hair. I've had to work hard on Eugene's face to get that right. I mean, it's a difficult angle. His, his head's tilted back, so I needed to see that under the nose. So I've had to spend a little bit of extra time refining Eugene's face. So now I'm gonna be working on the colors using a, a nice warm palette. I need to stick to the colors of the characters, but also the environment and lighting that's around them. I've got a bit of leeway to, to change those characters into the more warm setting to get that morning light. And so everything's a little bit warmer and a little bit softer. I wanna pause it here for a moment so I can show you the silhouette of this illustration. And you'll see here now, once I strip everything away, all the expressions, it's just clear black and white. What's the characters and what's not? And now you can clearly see what's going on. I think even from this silhouette, you should still be able to work out that this is a picture of Eugene and Rapunzel up in the tower. Uh, it's very clear. She's threatening with a frying pan. It's very clear who is the dominating force, who's on top. And it's very clear that Eugene is feeling threatened because you can see those fingertips. You, you know, that's about the only acting. I mean, he's tied up, but that's about the only acting he's got. So I had to make sure that the pose of those hands is nice and clear. You've also got those little areas around where she's holding onto her hair so you can clearly see where her arm is going and where she's got a grip. I've also had to make sure that the chair is very clear and defined as opposed to Eugene's head. He's got that slight little gap there which makes it much clearer and easier to read. Okay, so let's get back into the drawing. So I've finished all my colors now. Now I'm gonna add a bit of line work. Now for these set of Disney duo drawings that I'm doing, I'm setting down a certain style, so there's no black line work in this one. I'm, I'm doing coloured line work. It's just mainly going to be a darker tone to that of the matter that it's surrounding. The hair I can be a bit looser with because of hair strands. I'm able to make sure that the hair, some of the hair, it's, it's not, it doesn't have to match perfectly. It's hair, you know, there can be a few stray hair strands. And that allows me to speed through drawing the line work on the hair. I haven't, on these line work, gone directly outside everything. Some bits I've just left with the base color to show the hard edge. 
I've also gone in and added a few lighter line work sections as opposed to the darker one. This gives it a bit more detail and it's already starting to show the general light and form of the characters. Now I can move on to doing my shadows. Now my light is coming from the top left so you'll see most of the shadows are, are going to be underneath everyone and a little bit to the right and I try to stick to that throughout. Shadows can be a very difficult process to do. You've got to really start to practice this and get good at it and really think about forms and where the shadows are going to lie. If that light is hitting a character at a certain angle, you know, it's going to cast a shadow somewhere else. So you really got to think about that. I'm now going to add a, a few overall shadows, just a general area. Right now it's quite dark, but I'm going to I'm going to adjust that a bit later, but as I'm drawing it, making it darker will make it easier to work out where I'm going to put all these elements. And when you're drawing, if you're not happy with the shadow you do, don't delete it. Just knock it back. Knock it back to just a few percent so it's only barely visible. But that tiny little bit of shadow that you've already done, whether it was right or wrong, you know, is going to end up layering and giving you some depth. I'm now going through my shadows that I've created, that soft overall shadow, with an eraser and I'm knocking back the bits from that overall shadow that I wanted to be highlighted. And then I can adjust the level of that layer. I always work in 100% opacity and then knock it down later. So my brushes that I use are always at 100% opacity. It's the layering that I will adjust the levels of the opacity on and that way I've got greater control. Time now to add a little bit more detail into the dress. Rapunzel's dress has some fine detail in it and I felt it was important to get that right. So I've had to go and get some reference for that to make sure it's correct. I'll go through and do that pattern and then I'll duplicate it and spread it around. I'll then use a warp to adjust it slightly and then I can get it. That'll be fine. I mean, in the end, you'll probably won't see much of that pattern. Most people probably won't even notice it, but I think it's those finer details that aren't noticed at first, but you notice later in a drawing as you look into it more. I think they're what extends a, a simpler drawing into something that's more pronounced and beautiful. I don't know. That's, maybe that's just me. I, I like the details. <laughs> so even though... I wanted to keep the background simple in this. I've still drawn a bit of it here because I'm gonna, I need to blur it out. I want to get that feeling like we've got a, a soft focus on that background. So I've drawn some elements and then I just use a Gaussian blur to blur those out. I've then added rays of sunlight coming in from the window. You'll notice they're coming in the same direction as the main light source. Okay, so I've made sure to keep that consistent. I've also made sure that those rays of light, they're hitting Rapunzel right on the head. They're showing that she is the hero of this story. It's those god rays poking in and going, Aah! you know, look at this hero. She's amazing. That's what they say. I've then gone and add a few little particles floating in the air, some that capture the light more than others. Those little dust bunnies up there, I always find, give a lot of mood and feeling to a drawing and bring a bit of life to an uh, otherwise deader environment. In the end, I'm really happy with how this drawing's come out. I think it's one of my stronger drawings that I've done, and I'm very proud of this one. So thank you very much for watching this piece of Process Love Candy. I hope you join me on another one. But please, if you enjoyed this video, add a like and subscribe to my channel. I've got plenty more coming. Feel free to drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think, and I will catch you on the flip side.